everyone, welcome back to our channel. We are currently in the Philippines in a place called Bohol and today I'm doing something very exciting. I'm going scuba diving for the first time. The resort we're staying at is actually a scuba diving resort and fun fact, I've never been scuba diving before so I cannot wait. Our hotel offers some like starter package, basically for 3,500 pesos, which is about 50 pounds, they basically give you like a day course. So first of all, the day is going to start with a little introduction to the equipment, a bit of theory, and then we go into the swimming pool with all the equipment. And then finally it's ready to go out to sea and try everything we've learned out at sea. So I'm going to take you along. Hopefully you like this kind of video. Hopefully you'll get to see lots of fish. I've been told there's fish, turtles, everything like that. And yeah, come along on my first scuba diving experience. So the guys just explained to me what all the equipment means. And I've got my wet shoes, my wet suit on. Got my flippers here. Got my goggles and he's just set up my tank and things so he's about to bring it over and we're going to go in the pool and practice some different things he's been explaining to me that, that all the different hand signals they use underwater so this means going up this means going down this means there's a problem and this means you're okay <laughs> so we're going to practice them underwater practice cleaning the mask if we get water in it practice um, recovering the mouthpiece if we, if it, I guess it falls out, um, yeah, so I'll set you up on a wee tripod. The guy was saying though that the GoPro can't go less, more than 10 meters, he was worried about me taking the GoPro underwater but it says online it can go to 10 meters so hopefully I'll be able to bring you along. That, soap, and shampoo, shampoo, to stop it steaming up. Yeah. For anti fog. And then put direct. Yeah. Okay, but the skills first must clearing, right? Yep. I do first that's must clear. Yeah. Yes, I must clearing and then inhale to the mouth and then exhale to the mouth. Yep. Just you can do look up. Look up. Yeah. Here we are practicing mask clearing and regulator recovery before hopping on the boat to head out to sea. Okay. That's us going down to our diving spot. I'm literally the only person diving here. diving experience. Hopefully I've got some good footage from y'all. 
It was so cool. There were so many fish and we got to swim with two turtles, which I'm sure we caught on footage. We were down there for 40 minutes and my diving instructor told me we went as deep as 12.8 metres. I don't know if that's crazy deep or not, but um, it felt super deep anyway. But yeah, that was a great experience. If you've not been diving yourself, then it's definitely worthwhile doing at some point. I know you can kind of go on longer courses and dive even deeper and go to crazier places but that was enough for a nice starter intro and then yeah who knows maybe in the future i'll be diving a lot more hi everyone it is now the next day i have decided to come on and film today as well because i'm not sure how much footage i got of the snorkeling uh, sorry the scuba diving and i'm not sure how interesting it will be but we are in Bohol for another few days. We've got some exciting things planned today. So I thought it would make sense to come on and film what else there is to do in Bohol. So as I was saying earlier, we've decided just to film what else we get up to in Bohol over the next few days. Cause I don't think there was very much footage from the scuba diving. So the first stop today is a place called the Chocolate Hills. When you Google Bohol, it's always the first thing that comes up. They're basically these like limestone forma uh, formations that look like big bumps and they're covered in grass. Uh, it's a kind of natural formation and it's been on the list to try and get UNESCO World Heritage recognition, but it's not been recognized yet er anyway. But we drove a motorbike up here today from Panglao in the south of Oho um, and it took about an hour and a half but the roads were fine but we've just got our ticket and we're about to get on a free shuttle that takes you up there apparently so let's see what these chocolate hills are like Got some more steps to climb to get to the viewpoint. <laughs> this is what the hills look like. So behind me are the famous chocolate hills in Boho. I don't know if you can see them that well in the camera, but they're basically, according to Google, the hills are made up of cone-shaped limestone formations that were eroded over millions of years by rain and wind. And then they are now covered in lush vegetation, which gives them this chocolate color. Hence they're called the chocolate hills. I can't say I've seen anything else before quite like this. There's hundreds and hundreds of these hills and basically on one of the hills they've built a viewing platform so you can climb up the stairs and enjoy the lovely view. Excuse the state of me, we've just been caught in lots of rain. That's why we've got our rain jackets on. The shorts are, yeah, covered. But we are now at our second stop on our day trip. It's called a Tarsier sanctuary, conservation sanctuary. Basically tarsiers are these wee small animals that are um, becoming extinct. I think they're native to the Philippines. They're these tiny wee animals with these massive eyes. So we're going inside to see what they're like. This is what they look like. So it's saying here to be really quiet and not to touch them. I read online that they don't like any noise. They're actually nocturnal animals, so they'll probably be sleeping right now. And then they come out at night. Um, but yeah, it said online they have suicidal tendencies. Basically, it says when they hear noise or feel threatened at all, they hit their head against the tree repeatedly until they die and I guess that's maybe part of the reason why they're endangered 
as well as the fact that they're like human beings and that they only produce one egg a month so there's only a certain window where they can fall pregnant unlike other animals and they only I think they usually only have one baby What did you think of the wee tazziers, Jim? So the cost was 120 each. We saw three of them. They're about that size. And there was one that was uh, cleaning itself in it. Open its eyes up. Big, big eyes. Uh, They're really cute, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. They're really silent going round as well. You can't, can't make loud noises as uh, Slade said previously. They'll hurt themselves. But yeah, it was a quick stop. Yeah, we were literally in and out in like five minutes, but there was an area where they're doing like breeding work. So I guess you're kind of paying to help with the kind of conservation effort since they are an endangered species. But it's worthwhile a wee visit. The final stop of the day is to a man-made forest. We're basically going to drive past it on the way home. It's just next to the sanctuary. So apparently the trees were planted in the late 20th century as part of a government reforestation project to counteract deforestation in the area. Uh, so we'll see what the trees are like. As you can see from this video, Bow Hall really does have a wide range of things to offer. From good scuba diving spots, to white beaches, luscious greenery and so much more. If you've made it to the end of this video, then thank you very much for watching. Until next time, goodbye.